Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nisar Vikadam and today we are going to talk about the third episode of the series of UiPath developer interview questions. So in this series, we have already created two videos. First video was released on one month back, which was about top 30 RP interview questions. And the second video was top 20 UiPath RE framework interview questions. Thank you so much for a, such a huge response to these both videos. It made me think about that continuing the series with further more questions. So we are going to take this series to at least 10 to 15 videos so that we can cover all the aspects of being UiPath developer and everyone can leverage the knowledge and can crack the interview very easily. So this video, we are talking about specifically UiPath orchestrator related top 20 questions. So we are going to talk about top 20 UiPath interview questions based on orchestrator. So with this, we will start with our first question without wasting our time. So the first question is what are the orchestrator main capabilities? And this question will definitely be asked in your interviews. So answer to those questions, there are uh, certain capabilities that you can talk about. First thing is provisioning. So orchestrator helps you create, maintain, and connect connection between robots and web applications. So the second thing is deployment. Orchestrator assures that correct delivery of packages, versions to the assigned robots for execution. Then the third point is about the configuration. Orchestrator maintains and delivers robot environments and processes configuration. And the fourth point is queues. So orchestrator gives you, you know, ensures that automatic workload is distributed across all the robots using UiPath orchestrator queues. Then again, there are certain factors such as monitoring, logging, interconnectivity capability. So there are so many capabilities that orchestrator possesses. So out of which we have talked about provisioning, deployment, configuration, queue, monitoring, logging, and interconnectivity. The second question talks about what is the difference between floating robot and a standard robot? So standard robot actually works on a single standard machine only. Namely, on it, it only works with one machine. Okay, This is an ideal scenario in which a user is always working on the same machine. But floating robot works on any machine which is defined in orchestrator. It could be standard, it could be template machine, as the machine name is not relevant while creating it. So floating robot can work on any type of machine. But remember, standard robot works only on standard machine. Floating robot can work on either standard machine or floating machine. The third question talks about types of assets in orchestrator. So what are the different types of assets in orchestrator? So when we talk about the types, make sure that there are only four types of assets. First is integer, second is Boolean, third is string, and fourth is credentials. The credential type of asset is already encrypted with AES 256 bit algorithm, which is an encryption algorithm. This is the strongest encryption algorithm, which no one can decrypt very easily. So it's highly secure to store credentials in orchestrator asset. Again, the types of asset are based on only the data types. But again, there are two different, again, types of assets. First is value per each robot. Now you can assign asset value for each individual robot. But also there is another type of asset, which is a global asset. So remember there are different two types of assets, which is global asset, value per each robot. And again, the data type of assets are integer, boolean, string, and credentials. Now let's talk about the fourth question. So the fourth question here we have is how to upload data on queue through UiPath. So what are the different ways to upload data on queue? So there is an add queue item activity through which you can add the data. Again, there is a, you know, add bulk queue item activity because bulk queue item activity will add entire data table in queue. But add queue item activity will, will add each and every individual item in queue. You know, it provides the data in argument options and we can create queue named in um, queue options. But remember, before you upload data on queue, you have to manually create a queue in UiPath Orchestrator because queue cannot be automatically created from UiPath Studio. Perfect. Moving on to the fifth question. So the fifth question is about difference between add queue item, get queue item, and get transaction. So what is the main difference between add queue item, get queue item, and get transaction? So add queue item is used for uploading data to queue. Get queue item is actually used for getting the data from queue in the transactions in UiPath Studio to use it. Get transaction is used for getting the single transaction from queue. 
So get queue item and get transition, these both things are different. So it is the get queue item is used for getting the data from queue for all the transactions together. But get transition will get only a single transaction at a time from orchestrator queue. Remember, always this question will be asked, get queue item and get transaction. People will get confused here. Get queue item will not get only a single item. Get queue item will get you entire entire queue right here in the studio, while get transaction will get you only single transaction. So don't let yourself getting confused and answer this question very properly. So sixth question is asking, explain two types of schedulers. So there are two types of schedulers in UiPath, which earlier used to call as triggers. So these schedulers are nothing but one is time-based scheduler, another one is queue-based. So time-based trigger or time-based scheduler is one where you can schedule your process based on date and time or based on a periodic uh, time. You can also add cron expressions to that. But queue-based trigger works on the transaction elements of queue. So you can set, let's say, if you have reached a specific number of transactions which are not processed, then you can trigger a workflow. So queue-based trigger is based on number of transactions which are new, number of transactions which are not processed in a specific queue. The next question, let's jump on, is explain the difference, different statuses of queue. Now, this question will definitely be asked because this question a person can answer only if he is experienced enough to answer this question. Now, what are the different statuses of orchestrator queue? So there are approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think seven statuses. So seven statuses. What are all the seven statuses? Let's go through them one by one. So the first status is new. The new status is the when the item is just added to the queue with the add queue item activity. Okay or the item was postponed or item was, you know, or the deadline was added to it. That's when a new status will be appear for a transaction item. What is the status of queue when it is in progress? So in progress is when the item was processed with get transition item, but transition status is not set yet. So that time when it is being processed, it, the status of transition item will be in progress. Third status is failed. Now failed status item will be displayed when the business or application requirement exception is occurred and set transition status activity, we set it as fail uh, in orchestrator queue. The fourth status is successful. The item will be successful only when item is successfully processed and we set transaction status as successful from the activity. The fifth state is abandoned. Now abandoned when the item remains in progress status for more than 24 hours approximately without being processed. In that case, that queue or that transition item will be abandoned. Retried, sixth status. Now retried is a status where the item is failed with an application exception, but you have set the property of retry as more than one. In that case, it will retry itself and the robot will finish uh, that specific retry transition at the end according to the workflow. Now, the last one is delete. Now, deleted is a status where item has been manually selected from the transitions page and marked as delete. An item with the status can no longer be processed. So there are seven statuses of queue. The first one is new, in progress, failed, successful, abandoned, retried, and deleted. I hope you it answers this question. Now, let's move on to, can you schedule a job with attended report? So answer me. So can you schedule a job with attended robot, you can't because attended robot doesn't have feature to schedule a job from orchestrator because it is provided to only an attended robot. Okay, but can you, uh, you know, and locally do a schedule? So locally you can do that in your local machine, but from orchestrator you can't. So answer to this is no. You can only run it from the, from the robot, which is locally available or which you call as UiPath assistance. Now, where will you store credentials of automation? So there are several ways where you can store credentials of automation. So several ways, including your orchestrator asset and your Windows credentials, or you can buy a third party credential store. But if you store your data in Windows credentials, it's not that secure. And also it is available only for that specific machine. However, if you store your credentials in orchestrator asset, it is highly secured because orchestrator assets are AES-256 encrypted, which is very highly encrypted and nobody can decrypt it. So it's really nice algorithm of encryption. 
let's talk about the next question so the next question talks about can you update credentials stored in asset in orchestrator from uipath studio now, this question is a rare but this question is generally asked so this question's answer is we can update credential stores in asset manually what you can do is you can go to orchestrator assets and you can do that but how can you update credentials or how can you update the data in asset from uipath studio to answer this question you cannot do unless or until you have specific permissions on a robot type so we can what we can do is we can allow user to update only specific assets we can do that when you can go ahead and you can create a custom user role give him permission to only asset editing and then that particular robot or that particular role user can update the data in orchestrator but remember that is not recommended now question number 11 so question number 11 is very interesting is using the publish button in studio the only way to upload a package to orchestrator so you know right when you create click on publish button in uipath studio the process will show you there are two ways to process uh, to publish this particular process either you directly update it to the orchestrator packages or you publish it locally now when you publish it locally a new get package will be created which is dot nupkg now that new get package you can manually upload in uipath orchestrator on the packages page so yes answer to this question is yes there is another way where you can manually update it in orchestrator okay now upload it in orchestrator now which studio activity is linked with the stop command in orchestrator now orchestrator contains two commands when you run a process either stop or kill stop is gracefully stopping the workflow and kill is abruptly killing the workflow on the spot now how do you stop gracefully so there is a activity which is connected with the heartbeat mechanism which is nothing but the should stop activity should stop activity continuously keeps on checking the heartbeat mechanism and checks whether orchestrator has sent stop signal if orchestrator has not sent stop signal it will give you a boolean output whether true or false if it is true that means orchestrator has sent stop signal and we can design a workflow to gracefully stop so that's how uh, the answer of this question is let's move on to the third question what happens if the status of transaction in progress is not updated within 24 hours we have just talked about it in the previous question if you don't update the status of transaction which is in progress then in next 24 hours it will go in a state of abandoned remember this question will be asked in interviews or either in mcqs now where can you check whether a job was scheduled manually or started okay i mean whether job was scheduled or manually started so to answer this question when you go to your jobs panel you can check there is a source column that source column will update whether it is scheduled if it is scheduled it will name the name of a trigger and if it is manually executed it will type there as manual so just remember that and now let's move on to the next question so the next question is a fifth question when can we set non working day calendar in orchestrator so non working day calendar we can easily set if you go to orchestrator just click on settings in settings uh, or just go to tenant inside tenant there will be settings option go to settings and in settings you can see there is a non working day calendar available where you can create your own non working day calendar what are the storage bucket types or storage bucket providers for uipath orchestrator what are different storage buckets that you can provide to uipath orchestrator so what are the other things so answer to this question this question will be asked answer to this question is amazon s3 bucket azure storage which is also called as wasp orchestrator storage bucket you can use file system of server or you can use min io which is m i n i o so there are five different storage buckets which you can configure with uipath storage bucket first one is amazon s3 second one is azure storage which is wasp then third was orchestrator storage bucket fourth one is file system of server and fifth one is min io question number 17 which type of robot can be floating robot now this question is interesting because only attended and development type of robot can be of floating type so we talked about floating robots floating robot also works with standard machine and machine template it doesn't matter what the name of the machine is it can work on any machine 
So that's where floating robots comes into picture, but unattended robot cannot be floating robot. Remember that. Now, this is one of the most important question. What is machine template? So machine template. So you have to explain it in a very proper way. Machine template enables multiple users to connect their UiPath robot to orchestrator using same machine key. They generate key works for any machine on which UiPath robot is installed. So you don't have to specifically mention the name of the machine. You can give any machine name to machine template, but you can use that machine key to connect with any type of UiPath robot. But in order to do that, UiPath robot has to be installed on that machine. That can happen with no restrictions in terms of machine name. So this can be used for all types of setup, including those in which the name of the workstation changes every time when user logs in. And this happens a lot whenever you log into any server, which is created specifically for you or a cloud server. In that case, workstation name changes every time. So in that case, you can use machine template without you know, worrying about it. Then if you know about machine template, then what is the standard machine? So standard machine is a machine which enables you to connect with UiPath robot to orchestrator only on one workstation. The standard machine key is generated for a single workstation with the same name as given to the standard machine. And this is recommended if you want to restrict connecting UiPath robot to orchestrator on a certain machine only. In that case, you can use only unattended robot, remember. Now let's talk about the last question of the day, which is the 20th question. What are the different types of permissions and roles in orchestrator? So the different types of permissions are tenant permission and folder permission. So there are only two categories of permissions. So the permissions are tenant permission and folder permission. Tenant permission defines user's access to resources at the tenant level while folder permission defines user's access and ability within each folder they are assigned to. Based on the permissions they include, there are three types of roles. Remember, the first role is a tenant role, which includes the tenant permissions, which are required for working at the tenant level. Folder role, which includes the permission for working within a folder level. And mix role is the third role, which includes both the types of permissions, which is tenant level permission and folder level permission. So with that, we will conclude our today's call. So we have, uh, so let's uh, recap quickly. So we have covered 20 questions of top 20 UiPath interview questions based on orchestrator, where we have talked about orchestrator main capabilities, difference between floating and standard robot, types of assets, how to upload data on queue, difference between add queue item, two types of schedulers, different statuses of queue, can you schedule a job within orchestrator robot, where will you store the credentials, can you update credentials stored in assets, publish button, studio activity, uh, transactions, we have talked about jobs, non-working day calendar, storage buckets, robot types, machine templates, and then the permissions and roles. So we have covered almost every aspect of it within these 20 questions. And I hope there are more questions to orchestrators. So let me know if you want one more video for the second part of orchestrator interview questions, and I will do that. Let me know in the comment section if you want the second session or second video of the orchestra questions. And let's hope for the best and see you next time. Thank you so much and happy automation.